Hey Freedom fans, it's Katherine Gordon, the Sugar Freedom Woman, and I want you to know that the best things in life are still free and sugar free. It's time to eat, so I thought I would share what I am eating these days. Keto carnivore, going carnivore, mostly meat. My new saying, now that I eat mostly meat, I consume less of everything, including meat. Now how can that be? Well, back when I went Atkins and I went through my physical transformation back in 2008, I was eating more meat than I'm eating now. So let me take you through a typical day. So breakfast would usually be a couple of eggs, two strips of bacon and some vegetables, and then lunch, a big salad with you know, five or six ounces of either uh, chicken or pork or beef, and then dinner once again, five or six ounces, chicken, pork, beef, any kinds of meat or fish or poultry. But now what's really interesting is I'm eating two meals a day, so I'm pretty much going too mad, not oh mad, but too mad, two meals a day, because that's really all that I want. And I tend to eat a morning meal and then a midday meal. So it's about 102 here in California, and I usually eat between one and 130, and that keeps me going all day long. Also, I do, when the theaters are open, I do a lot of live theater. And if you're not in the big time, usually you're, you're rehearsing in the evening or the afternoon. And so I don't want to go and go to rehearsal or dance or sing on a full stomach. So I have dance class at uh, three o'clock, 3.30. We literally dance in my teacher's driveway during COVID. So I just wanna briefly show you lunch. And it's not all that pretty, I'm sorry. Sometimes prettier meals are great. But what you'll see is this really nice, um, I made a four egg omelet this morning with shrimp and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So, I'm, so I do have a little bit of dairy. Oh, delicious. So four ounces of shrimp, four eggs, an ounce of Parmesan cheese, and then I split that half in the morning and then half in the afternoon. Got a slice of bacon here, and usually that's mostly for flavor. And then I have my New York steak. So how can I say that now that I eat mostly meat, I consume less of everything? Is because over the course of the day, I split my New York steak, four ounces, four ounces, right? So that's eight. And then just an ounce of bacon and then the shrimp is is fish so i'm not really calling that meat so i'm actually eating less meat now that i'm eating mostly meat because i don't want to overeat anymore and i hope that that uh, that makes sense and i think that what we're seeing and the people who are more you know doctors and uh, psychiatrists who are doing keto carnivore and who are talking about what's happening is that I'm not eating any anti-nutrients. So I'm not eating anything that's irritating my gut or that's driving my appetite or driving my mood. So everything that I'm eating is working for me and so I'm digesting it. And so I just don't need to eat as much because what I am eating is actually nourishing and satisfying and then I can go on and move on with everything else. And I wanna talk about the first 1961, Strong Medicine was published, and that was written by Blake Donaldson, MD, and you can get that for free, the PDF, and I'll link to it later. And that was the book that I read that really convinced me that it was perfectly safe to go meat-based, to go carnivore, because Dr. Blake Donaldson has been recommending this, and he's not with us anymore, since the 1960s. And here's what's really interesting is that I had tried to start eating more of a mixed diet before. I wrote Sugar Freedom back in 2013, and it is more of a mixed diet. It's no sugar, no grains, no vegetable oils, but there are you know vegetables and sometimes fruits in it. So I had gone back to that, and what was happening is creeping on a little weight, having more difficulty maintaining my weight, my digestion was off, but the worst thing is that my mood was off not happy, not productive, that voice in my head, really getting down on myself. And what Dr. Donaldson recommends in his book and the way he would work with his patients is he would put them on basically meat, water, and half a cup of coffee. That's what they would get. And they'd get eight ounces of meat three times a day. And they would do that until he felt that they were at the right size or weight. He actually went more by he wanted them to get down to a, a specific size as opposed to a specific weight. And then once they got to that size, he said, okay, and he would have them add back a few carbohydrates. And it would be maybe a little bit of potato, maybe a little bit of fruit and some vegetable. 
And if their appetites resurged and if they started to gain the weight back, Dr. Donaldson would say, okay, we need you to drop a little bit lower. He would put, him, put them back on the strong medicine program say, okay, let's, let's drop a little bit more, let's drop a couple more inches, and then they would retest the carbohydrates until the point at which they could add back some things and then still maintain their weight, which when you think about it, is a lot like what Dr. Atkins would do, is he'd put you on induction, he'd put you into ketosis, and then they would test some foods back. Well, I'm just here to tell you that at age 56, the putting foods back is not working for me right now. Trying to put back, a salad and a, a serving a broccoli a day and maybe some salsa, as tasty and yummy as it is, it just isn't working because it's wrecking my mood, it's wrecking my digestion, and it's making me hungry. So that's the carnivore paradox. And if there's one thing I hope you take away from this is this paradoxical idea that if you're eating the right foods, you actually need to eat less food. And what's very, very odd is that sometimes more food actually drives appetite. And for me, going two meals a day, carnivore is working beautifully. But I also wanted to cover when I did eat, stop, eat. Because I did eat, stop, eat, which is essentially one meal a day. And that was written by Brad Pilon, I did it back in 2008, and then he was one of the first, in my opinion, in, who really opened the door on this idea of intermittent fasting or intermittent eating, whichever way you want to put it. And I did do Eat Stop Eat back in 2008, and it was incredibly effective. And so what I would do is one day a week, I would eat one meal. And at that time, I was doing Atkins induction at the same time. And I remember I was working with Craig Ballantyne Craig Ballantyne doing turbulence training and uh, he had his membership site and you know we would kind of like post what we what we were doing and he chimed in and it was like wow Atkins and eat stop eat are you sure and it was funny because what we didn't know in 2008 that I feel that I understand a lot better now is so much more research has been done so many more medical doctors and nutritionists and psychiatrists have looked at a meat based ketogenic eating strategy, that it is very comforting to know that there are all of these experts that I can refer back to, like Dr. Donaldson, and feel much more comfortable about the concept of doing Eat Stop Eat or applying fasting to a keto carnivore strategy. Now, of course, this is a demonstration, not a recommendation. Do what's right for you and check with your doctor but I do want to report that it's really feeling good. And the exciting thing is I have enough energy, my clothes are fitting better, and I'm enjoying my food. But most of all, my enthusiasm is back. And I just wanna share one more thing before I warm up this plate and enjoy my lunch and I leave you for the day, is I am back doing things like jumping rope again. And back when I won those transformation contests between 2008 and 2012, I was doing things like jumping rope, I was doing assisted pull-ups, and I was just thoroughly enjoying the journey of becoming more physically fit and able to do more things. And amazingly enough, at 56, I am back jumping rope again, relearning the boxer skip and all of that one little bit at a time. And I just wanna share with you the jump rope that I'm using because I am five foot one. And of course, you know, how you, measure, you know how you measure your jump rope, right? You stand on it and you pull it up to your armpits. And the beauty of this one, and I just ordered a new one on Amazon and it just came yesterday. And this one is from, what's the company? Um, Tiff Taff Jump Rope. So made in China, new. So this is the one, okay. This is my old one from wad fitters and you can still look this up on amazon and the beauty of it is and this is the new saying i'm using you know i like sayings right is how can i train with ease and joy and a lot of that is at, at my age i really want to protect my body i want to get stronger i want to get leaner but i want to make sure i can keep going so i don't want to hurt my knees i don't want to hurt my back and so when I jump rope, what I do is I skip until I miss. 
And for now, because I'm just getting back into it, I'm missing, you know, I'm usually going about, you know, 20 seconds before I miss. And then I rest and then I come back again. So I'm also using this kind of like intermittent training with my jumping rope. So jump until I miss, rest, and then I usually do nine rounds because that is my lucky number. So if you're into fitness and if you're into training, I just want to suggest to you that you might want to use that mental image if you're resisting your training, if you don't want to work out on those days, that you ask yourself this question, how can I train today with ease and joy? And what I find is that when I do go ahead and get in the office where all the fitness equipment is, and once I get started, if I have a training regimen that I'm using, and right now I'm doing nine lifts to failure, I simply say to myself, how can I train with ease and joy? I do my exercises and what I find is, yeah, I train with good effort, good intensity, and good form, even though there's still a sense of joy in the workout. When you're talking about ease, how can you be lifting with ease? Well, here's how. And when I was a personal trainer, this is one of the things that I used to tell my clients, is that within any particular set, whether you're doing six reps or you're doing 12 reps or you're doing 15 reps, that that first rep, two, three, four, that those actually are going to be done with a certain amount of ease and joy. And it's that sense that those first couple of reps, you've got this, not hard. And then it doesn't get hard until you get into those very last two or three reps. And that's where the work is, but that the main part of the training session is going to be done with ease and joy. All right, so that is it for today. That is my keto carnivore update for March the 1st, 2021. And as always, everybody, eat for yourself, be well, and I'll see you back here soon in the Sugar Freedom Kitchen. Bye-bye.